Let me thank the organizers, Martin, Timo, and Otmar for putting all this together. Um, this is really fun to be a part of. And uh, today what I'd like to talk about is Mordell's conjecture on rational points, um, on curves of genus two or more, um, and what has happened since uh, over the 99 years since the conjecture was stated in 1922. All right. So in 1922, Mordell published a very interesting paper where a number of things happened. So in this paper, he not only proved that the set of rational points on an elliptic curve is a finitely generated Abelian group, and Mordell's theorem, uh, but he also conjectured that for curves over the rational, so a smooth projected curve over the rationals of genus two or more, that the set of rational points is finite. Now, this conjecture came to be known as the Mordell conjecture and was proved by faultings about 60 years later. So here is the statement of faultings theorem. I have a smooth projective curve over the rationals of genus at least two, then I know that its set of rational points is finite. But just one remark, this is a wonderful theorem, a very impressive result about uh, understanding rational points on curves. Uh, but the proof itself doesn't give to us the set of rational points. It's not constructive and doesn't hand to us the set of rational points on the curve at the very end. Now, there have been a few other proofs uh, over the course of the last few decades. So I'd just like to mention a few. Uh, that Voita gave another proof of the Mordell conjecture using Diphanton approximation, but it also doesn't construct for you the set of rational points at the end. Uh, and very recently, uh, work of Brian Lawrence and Akshay Venkatesh extend some of the ideas in Faulting's work uh, and combine it with some chaotic Hodge theory to give another proof of the Mordahl conjecture. So now we have a few different perspectives on Mordahl's conjecture, a few different proofs of this result. And so we truly know that the set of rational points on these curves uh, is finite, but we don't have an effective way of computing the set in general. So we would hope to do more uh, with a set of rational points. So we know that the Mordell conjecture holds that the set of rational points is finite when we have a curve over the rationals with genus two or more, but yet we want to know more. Uh, we want to know uh, a few more things about the set of rational points. So just to name two things, um, one is a good bound on the size of the set of rational points, much like we saw during the first lecture, sometimes we can get a bound. And so the question is, how much can we push that idea? Can we get a good bound on the size of the set of rational points for a uh, large class of curves, for instance? Uh, and more generally, can we explicitly compute the set of rational points for curves of genus two or more? So what I'd like to do today is discuss uh, what I think are roughly three different themes that address these questions. Uh, and I'd like to give a survey uh, of some of the developments over the 99 years since Mordell's conjecture. So some of these themes are related. Uh, there's some overlap among the three um, various thoughts. Uh, so uh, the first one being uh, effectively computing rational points on curves. Uh, the second being focusing on a particular class of curves of interest, modular curves and different techniques for understanding rational points on modular curves. And then finally, to look at some questions and answers about uniformity of the size of the set of rational points on these curves. So just to start with the first theme, of understanding rational points on curves and explicitly computing the set of rational points on curves of genus two or more, I thought I'd start with this theorem of Chabotie. So this theorem of Chabotie uh, predates Faulting's work by over 40 years. 
So Chabouti proved the following special case of the Mordal conjecture. So in 1941, he showed that if I have a curve of genus two or more over the rationals, and the mordal Bay rank of the Jacobian is less than G, then its set of rational points is finite. So there is this restriction, this hypothesis on the rank of the Jacobian, uh, but in that case, we can show that the set of rational points is finite. Now, the proof of Chabotis method uh, was based on Skolem's method. And I thought I'd just roughly sketch the proof in the case of genus two rank one, uh, perhaps the simplest non-trivial case of this result. So if I take P, a prime of good reduction for the curve, and I embed the curve into its Jacobian J, then we'd like to consider J of QP, the chaotic points in the Jacobian. And this is a chaotic Lie group. It's two-dimensional. And it contains two one-dimensional subvarieties, the chaotic points on the curve and the chaotic closure of the Q points of the Jacobian. Now, the intersection of these two one-dimensional subvarieties is zero-dimensional and finite, and the set of rational points is contained in each. So the set of rational points is a subset of this finite set, and that way we have finiteness of the set of rational points. Then about 40 years later, so fast forward to around the time of Faulting's theorem, Coleman showed that you could both get a really good bound on the size of the set of rational points. Uh, in some cases, as we saw, this can actually help you determine the set of rational points and effectively compute a finite set containing the set of rational points if you consider the curves for which Chabotis theorem applied. So what did Coleman do? So in the early 1980s, he wrote a series of papers outlining a theory of chaotic line integration on curves. And uh, over the course of these papers, he also gave a number of spectacular applications for this work. So including studying torsion on abelian varieties, but also looking at chaotic heights and chaotic regulators. Uh, and he also made uh, Chabotis theorem effective. So his paper on effective Chabotis appeared in 1985. And he showed that you can make Chabotis theorem effective and explicitly compute rational points uh, by translating the ideas in terms of his theory of chaotic line integration, what we now call Coleman integration. So in particular, there's a certain regular one form you'd like to construct and compute its Coleman interval. And in the case of a curve over the rational, so genus two or more, and Jacobian rank R less than G, so exactly the hypotheses of Chabotis setup, Coleman did the following things. He constructed a so-called annihilating regular one form and computed its piatic interval, translated that to a piatic power series, and counted the number of its zeros. And doing that bit of chaotic analysis, he showed that for prime sufficiently large, so for good prime larger than 2G, that the number of rational points on the curve was bounded above by the number of FP rational points on the curve plus 2G minus two. So essentially this bound on the right-hand side uses two sort of different bits of information, one being some local information, understanding zeros um, locally um, across residue disks, but then also using some global information about the curve in Dimagoff. And so using the integral of an annihilating differential and studying its set of zeros, he produced an explicit finite set of chaotic points on the curve which we'll call XQP1. Um, and this set of points by construction contains a set of rational points. Now, these days, we still use this method uh, to uh, much success. It works very well in practice. And we call this the Chabotis Coleman method. So, this process of constructing uh, piatic integrals and studying their zeros to determine the set of rational points. I just wanted to say a few words about this since this uh, will take us to some 
recent ideas and other variations. So if I fix a prime of good reduction for the curve, I'm going to insist that it's larger than two, uh, then I will embed the curve into its Jacobian, uh, the oval Jacobi map I'll call iota. And that induces a map of these g-dimensional chaotic vector spaces, the regular one forms on the Jacobian and the regular one forms on the curve x. And I'm going to suppose I have a regular one form omega j on the Jacobian that restricts to a regular one form omega on the curve. Now, the Jacobian is a chaotic Lie group. Uh, so thinking of the Jacobian over QP as a chaotic Lie group and has some chaotic integrals. So I'm going to use that to define a chaotic integral on the curve. So I'm going to define the integral between points Q and Q prime on the curve to be the integral between zero and the class of the divisor Q prime minus Q on the Jacobian. And so now I have a notion of chaotic integration on the curve. And here's where the hypothesis of rank less than genus comes in. Um, so if I have a, this g-dimensional space of regular one forms and essentially R independent conditions coming from the Jacobian, well, then I have some positive co-dimension if R is less than G. Uh, so some positive dimensional space of uh, annihilating regular one forms. The claim is that there exists at least one uh, non-trivial regular one from omega on the curve such that if I integrate from a fixed base point B to any rational point on the curve, I get zero. And so we can turn this around and integrate from this base point. And once we've constructed this annihilating regular one form using uh, this data from the R independent points on the, on the Jacobian, uh, so we construct this annihilating differential and then study it as a chaotic power series across all residue disks of the curve and then compute the zeros of that chaotic power series. There are finally many zeros. And so that will give us a finite set of chaotic points containing the set of rational points on the curve. So that is the set XQP1, the set of zeros of this integral, this annihilating regular one from omega. And the set of rational points is contained in this set. So to carry out the method, what we're trying to do is compute an annihilating differential omega, and then to calculate the finite set of chaotic points uh, such that this integral vanishes. Now, sometimes we can get away with less. So we don't need to go through this extra chaotic analysis of computing uh, the chaotic power series with our bare hands and so on. Uh, but uh, in the case where the number of rational points is sufficiently large, and the number of FP rational points is sufficiently small, it can be the case that this bound on its own is enough to determine the set of rational points. So if we are lucky enough that we can pick a suitably small prime such that the order of XFP is sufficiently small, such that this bound happens to collide with the number of known rational points on the curve, then we're done just with Coleman's bound. But I should remind you that all of this assumes that the rank of the Jacobian is less than G, the genus of the curve. So let's come back to this curve from the first lecture, this curve from Diophantus. So Diophantus in problem 17 of book six of the Arabic manuscript of the Arithmetica many years ago posed the following problem which is to find three squares, which when added give a square, and such that the first one is a side or the square root of the second, and the second is a side or the square root of the third. So to translate this into an equation, Diophantus is asking if we can find positive rational x and y, such that the equation y squared equals x to the eighth plus x to the fourth plus x squared is satisfied. And Diophantus provided the solution. So Diophantus was happy. He solved his problem. Uh, but from our point of view, for trying to understand a set of rational points on a curve, we'd like to determine all rational points. So we'd like to know if there are any others. So let's remove the singularity at 0, 0, 
And this now is a question about determining the set of all rational points on the genus two curve with affi model y squared equals x to the six plus x squared plus one. And one reason this curve is particularly interesting, so it's a very old curve, but it turns out to be the only higher genus curve considered in the 10 known books of the Arithmetica. And it just so happens that this curve is rather interesting uh, in the sense of being a little bit difficult to apply Shevichi Coleman to directly. So remember, Shevichi Coleman for a genus two curve would require that the rank of the Jacobian be less than two. But it turns out that the rank of the Mordel Bay group of the Jacobian is two. All right, so it's just a little bit too big. Nevertheless, uh, Joe Weatherall in his 1997 PhD thesis showed that one can determine the set of rational points on this genus two curve. So this is the set of rational points. Now, one nice property about this genus two curve is that it has extra automorphisms. It's a phi elliptic genus two curve. Um, you'll notice that in addition to the usual hyperelliptic involution, there's that involution in X. Uh, and indeed, this extra automorphism helps us decompose the Jacobian of the curve as the product of two elliptic curves. Now we said that the Jacobian rank was two and it happens in the interesting way uh, where we have now two rank one elliptic curves. So what Weatherall did was to consider a collection of covering curves uh, and then to apply Shevardy Coleman on the covers, really some quotients of the covers um, where he found uh, so he found two genus three curves, one with rank zero and one with rank one. And then he was able to apply Shevardy Coleman there and then to pull things around back to this curve that he and Diophantus were interested in. All right, so this is part of a larger trajectory, uh, understanding curves of genus two or more uh, by associating other geometric objects to them and then explicitly computing a slightly larger, but hopefully, uh, and in some cases we can show finite set of points containing the set of rational points. So by associating the Jacobian of the curve or other geometric objects, uh, one can hopefully compute a finite set of piatic points containing the set of rational points. And sometimes there is a discrepancy and there are extra piatic points that you don't expect to find. Other times you precisely determine the set of rational points right off the bat. I just wanted to mention that there are a number of variations on the Shabuti Coleman method over the last few decades. Um, just to name a few uh, of the individuals who have contributed to this literature, so Niels Brown, Victor Flynn, Samir Siksek, Mikhail Stowe, in addition to Joe Leverall. Um, so ideas including combining, so in the case um, when you have the curve over a number field, the idea of restriction of scalars um, or covering collections, like in the case of Weatherall, um, or using, uh, if you admit uh, a nice map down to an elliptic curve over a number field, so in combinations of all those ideas, uh, these have all tackled a number of interesting curves with higher Jacobian rank. And I should also mention that there is a broad generalization of the Shabuti Coleman style ideas, uh, what's known as non-abelian Shabuti, which is a program initiated by Minyoung Kim to understand rational points on curves with Jacobians of higher rank by passing to non-abelian geometric objects. And I'll say more about this a bit later. Right, I just wanted to mention a few other related ideas uh, for studying effectively rational points on curves. Uh, so not quite in the vein of Shabuti Coleman, but uh, still producing very nice results on uh, effective determination of rational points on certain classes of curves. So the first is the method of Dem Demyanenko and Manin, which applies in the situation when I have a curve over a number field such that the curve admits M morphisms to an abelian variety, all defined over the number field and linearly independent mod constants, and for which uh, this number of morphisms is sufficiently large, so larger than the rank of A of K. Uh, in that case, 
uh, the set of k rational points is finite. And this can be made effective. And so indeed, there are a number of examples of using this in literature to find rational points on curves of genus two and three due to Silverman, Serre, Kulesh, Gerard Kulesh, and Kulesh, Matera, and Schust. There's also been work on explicit Mordell uh, using uh, bounds for heights of points. Uh, so I just wanted to mention one result along these lines by Sarah Ciccoli, Francesco Veneziano, and Evelina Viata, who proved the explicit Mordell conjecture for certain families of curves, uh, where they use it to determine the set of rational points on curves lying in the square of an elliptic curve. All right, so the second theme uh, that I'd like to discuss is classes of curves of interest uh, in number theory, and uh, to focus on the case of modular curves. So there are a number of very important questions in number theory that come from moduli problems, in particular understanding rational points on modular curves. So for instance, this beautiful theorem of Mazur that tells us about rational torsion on elliptic curves. So if I have an elliptic curve over the rationals, and P some rational point of finite order N, then N has to be one of these possibilities, one through 10 or 12. And the idea is to study the rational points on the modular curve X1 of N. The non-cuspidal rational points correspond to elliptic curves defined over the rationals with a point P, a rational point P of order N. And so Mazur's theorem is equivalent to the assertion that the rational points on X1 of N consists only of cusps if n is 11 or greater than or equal to 13. The Mazur's work tells us a classification of the torsion subgroups, the rational torsion subgroups. So it's isomorphic to one of the following 15 groups. So Z mod n for n between one and 12, with the exception of 11, or Z mod two plus Z mod two n uh, for n between one and four. Now, we can also ask, what about if we replace uh, the rational numbers by a number field? Can we say anything about the k-rational torsion on the elliptic curve? So just going up uh, in degree by one, uh, say looking at quadratic torsion, uh, is there something that can be said? And uh, this was the work of Pamieni, Kenku, and Mamose, uh, spanning, I think, about a decade and at least 15 papers uh, culminating in this result in 1992, that if I have an elliptic curve over a quadratic field, then the torsion subgroup is isomorphic to one of the following 26 groups. So here they are. And I think they all they occur infinitely often. So this is remarkable because this tells us uh, a complete understanding of torsion over all quadratic fields and just these 26 possibilities. So you can ask, well, uh, is there some sense of uniformity for number fields uh, and torsion over number fields? And Morell proved uh, in 1996 that indeed there is a uniform bound on the order of torsion. So for every positive integer d, there is a constant B of D such that for all elliptic curves E over K in the number field with degree D, we have that the K rational torsion, its order is bounded by B of D. Now this bound is not effective, but Morel further showed that if E of K has a P torsion point for prime P, then P is bounded by D to the 3D squared. And there were further refinements along these lines, um, most recently by Cajon. So we could, of course, ask, uh, can we make more of these ideas explicit? And it's tempting to go on. And I just wanted to mention uh, the case of cubic torsion, uh, which is the following. So if I have an elliptic curve over a cubic field, uh, then the torsion subgroup is isomorphic to one of the following 26 groups. And I think here uh, 25 of them occur infinitely often. Uh, this theorem was the work of many, many people. Uh, so uh, just to name a few, so John Kim and Schweitzer, Nyman, Pajon, 
Momose Wang, Brian Nyman, uh, and most recently, Derek Etropolsky, Van Hoy, Morrow, and Zurich Brown. Of course, we could keep going and consider Cordic and, and so on, uh, but I think uh, we'll leave the story for Torsion here uh, and slightly expand um, and consider the idea of looking at modular curves associated to Gal representations. So uh, if I take an elliptic curve over the rationals uh, and fix a prime L, then we have an action of the absolute Galois group on L torsion. And if we fix the basis, we can get this residual Galois representation, rho bar EL. And we can study its image in GL2 FL. So Sarah proved in 1972 that if E does not have complex multiplication, then rho bar EL is surjective for L sufficiently large. Uh, but then as uh, we have seen in the past, it's very tempting to ask about uniformity. And so, so then Sarah went on to ask if there is an absolute constant L naught such that rho bar EL is surjective for every non cm elliptic curve E defined over the rationals and every prime L greater than this bound L naught. And the full floor conjecture is that 37 should do the trick. All right, so how do we approach this problem? Well, to show that rho bar EL is surjective, uh, you'd like to show that its image is not contained in the maximal subgroup of GL2FL. So here's a classification of the maximal subgroups. So we have the Borel subgroups, those ones that are upper triangular, uh, the exceptional subgroups, those with projective image A4, S4, or A5, the normalizers of the split carton subgroups, uh, the normalizers of the non-split carton subgroups. And for each of these cases, for a maximal subgroup G, there's a corresponding modular curve that we like to study, the modular curve over the rational, such that the non-cuspidal rational points correspond to elliptic curves over the rationals with that particular Galois image. So the image uh, that representation contained in G. All right, so what's known about these four cases? Well, the case of the Burrell subgroups this was handled by Mazur in his work on rational isogenies of prime degree. The case of the exceptional subgroups was work of Serre. The case of the split carton subgroups is more recent. This is work of Philippe Pahan and then Philippe Pahan Reveillado. The case of the non split carton subgroups, on the other hand, uh, this is wide open. And so uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done in this, in this last case. Uh, so I thought I'd just say a few words about what happened um, in the most recent work on Bibi Paha, Bibi Paha, Rebellido, in the case of the split carton subgroups. So Bibi Paha and Bibi Paha, Rebellido showed that uh, the set of rational points on the split carton modular curves of level L is just cusps and CM points for L greater than or equal to 11 with the exception of 13. So of course, one is curious, well, what happens at 13 and what went wrong at 13? So of course, there's some numerology with 13, uh, perhaps being unlucky, uh, but there are some very striking math mathematical coincidences about uh, this level 13. So one crucial part of their work is to use Mazur's method for showing integrality of non-cuspidal rational points, which uses the following decomposition of the Jacobian. So we you know that the Jacobian of the split carton modular curve of level L is isomorphic to the Jacobian of X naught of L squared mod Akin Lehner at L. And this in turn is isogenous to the Jacobian of X naught of L uh, times the Jacobian of X non-split of L. And Mazur's method applies whenever the Jacobian of X naught of L is non-trivial, which is the case for 11 uh, and 17 or higher. But at 13, uh, this is trivial. So we don't get to pick off a nice factor here. And the Jacobian of the split carton curve of level 13 is isogenous to the Jacobian of the non-split carton curve of level 13. Uh, and the Jacobian of the split carton for the level 13 is absolutely simple. But more goes wrong. 
So we said that the non-split carton case was trickier. Uh, and so Baran ended up finding an explicit smooth playing Fordic model of both curves, the split carton curve of level 13 and the non-split carton curve of level 13, and showed that actually there is an isomorphism defined over the rationals. And there's no known modular explanation for this sort of collision. So this does not bode well for us, given that our split carton curve of level 13 turns out to actually be a non-split carton curve of level 13. So here is the model that she found for x split of 13. It's a smooth plane quartic, reasonably nice coefficients. So you can ask, well, given that we have a model, is there something that we can do explicitly with this curve? Maybe try to determine its rational points anyway. Uh, can we use Shabuti Coleman to compute rational points on this curve? Well, it turns out that the rank is just too big again. Um, and unlike the curve that Weatherall studied, the curve of Diophantus, there aren't these extra automorphisms that we can use uh, to consider nice covers. So we need to do more here. But I alluded to this program earlier of Kim of uh, pushing the Shabuti Cole method in a non abelian direction. And instead of stopping at the Jacobian of X in this abelian geometric object, together with the abelian integrals, to study non abelian geometric objects coming from various pieces of the fundamental group associated to X. And these carry iterated Coleman integrals, which cut out a, se a sequence of what Kim calls Selmer varieties coming from cohomology with certain local conditions imposed. And this gives a sequence of sets for finding the Shabuti Coleman set. So earlier we said that the zero set of that Coleman integral, the annihilating differential, we were going to call XQP1. And that was to suggest and to anticipate that we might have an XQP2 or an XQPN along the way. So the depth N set in the method is given by equations in terms of n-fold iterated Coleman integrals. So Kim proved a number of results about um, these sets, um, and in particular in the case of CM Jacobians together with Coates, um, showed eventual finiteness of these sets. Um, and I should also mention that uh, Ellenberg and Hast also extended some of that work of Coates and Kim to prove, uh, to give a new proof of faulting theorem in the case of super elliptic curves. So there are definitely some exciting results along the lines of using non abelian Shabuti to prove um, finiteness of rational points. Uh, and there's also recent work of Alex Betts and others on bounding uh, the number of zeros of these iterated Coleman integrals to then prove bounds on the number of integral uh, and, and I think eventually rational points on curves. So there is a lot of ongoing work along these lines to use non-abelian Shabuti to understand rational points on higher genus curves. I just wanted to mention one result about the second set, the quadratic Shabuti set. Uh, so in joint work with Nitan Dabra, we showed that if our curve satisfies the Jacobian rank less than G plus the rank of neuron severity minus one, then the second set, the quadratic Shabuti set is finite. And we can make this effective and explicit in some cases to determine the set or a slightly larger set containing XQP2. And in joint work uh, with Dagra, Mueller, Tatman, and Bonk, we used quadratic Shabuti so computation involving double integrals or solutions to piatic differential equations uh, coming from piatic heights to show that the split carton modular curve of level 13 uh, just has the seven rational points that Galbraith had found earlier. And this completes the classification of rational points in the split carton curves by Bilou Parent Rabiedo and by the work of Virtue Baron, since uh, this bit of the curse that the split carton curve of level 13 is isomorphic to the non-split carton curve of level 13 over Q. Well, here it turns out to give us something nice that we actually know about the rational points on the, split, on the non-split carton curve via the information from the split carton curve. So it just has the seven rational points. 
So we just saw a number of questions about modular curves coming from the model that representation attached to an elliptic curve or prime L. But we can go further, consider this vertical problem and consider the L-adic Galois representation. This is the L-adic case of Mazur's program B over the rationals, uh, which is given a number field K and a subgroup H of GL2Z hat to classify all elliptic curves E over that number field whose associated Galois representation on torsion maps the absolute Galois group into H. And there's been a lot of work on understanding L-adic images over the last decade. Uh, so I just wanted to mention a few results along those lines. So Jeremy Rouse and David Zurich Brown classified in 2015 all two images. In the case of 13 attic images, the last remaining modular curve after the cursed curve is XS413, which is a smooth plane cortic that was studied by Verinder Banwait and John Cremona. And here there are four known rational points. Uh, and it has a number, this curve has a number of similar properties uh, with the cursed curve. Uh, in particular, the rank of the Jacobian is three because this Jacobian turns out to be isogenous to the Jacobian of X split of 13. Uh, so recently, uh, in joint work with Dagra, Mueller, Tautman, and Bonk, we used quadratic Chevati for this curve as well and showed that it just has the four rational points. Now, very recently, just about a month ago, uh, a very nice paper of Rouse Sutherland and Zurich Brown appeared, which classified most of the remaining l adic images. So this is a case of L equals 3, 5, 7, and 11. And there are a number of spectacular diphantin achievements in this paper. So I thought I'd mention a few, but you should definitely take a look at this paper to see all the different modular curves they study and all the new diphantine tools they add to our toolbox. Um, so they determine rational points on a genus 43 curve the yeah, model of the curve that's given by the vanishing of 8 here 20 quadrants and 242. And they also carry out an equationless more dull basis on a genus 41 curve with analytic rank 41, which is quite impressive. All right, so for the last theme, which is studying bounds on the number of rational points, uh, we saw earlier in the case of a curve over the rationals with Jacobian rank less than G, Coleman did this bound the number of rational points is bounded by the number of FT rational points, that's 2G minus two. But before um, or around that time, uh, using work of Faltings, Mumford, Parshin, and Raynaud, you can also give an upper bound on the number of K rational points on the curve. Boida um, and Huimel and Debbie Gubicon also gave uh, bounds on the number of K rational points on the curve using techniques from Diffantin approximation. Uh, but very recently, so just this year, Veselin Dimitrov, Zian Gao, and Philip Haviger proved the following amazing result. Uh, so you can give a bound in terms of the genus, rank, and degree. Uh, so if I have G, an integer to the rank of two, and D, an integer to the rank of one, then there exists a constant C depending on G and D, such that if X is a curve of genus G over a number field K with degree of a number field at most D and Jacobian rank R, then the number of K rational points is bounded by C to the one plus R. And this gives an affirmative answer to a question posed by Mazur earlier. And then very recently, so there have been a lot of breakthroughs in the last year, uh, Lars Kuna, remove this dependency on the degree of extension in C to give a bound solely in terms of genus and the more del Bay ring. All right, so then back to the uniformity conjecture. So we mentioned this uh, last time. So Caparasso, Harris, and Mazur conjectured that if I have G an integer greater than or equal to two and K a number field, that there exists a uniform bound uh, B in terms of the genus and the number field such that it acts as a smooth projective curve of genus two or more defined over this number field K, then the number of K rational points 
is bounded above by uh, e in terms of g and k. So I just thought I'd mention a few results uh, in this direction, uh, suggesting that perhaps uniformity might be possible, at least in some cases. So it turns out Shepati Pullman, again, uh, plays a role in the first of these results. Uh, so the first result along these lines was given by Mikhail Stoll for hyperlyptic curves. So he showed that if we have a hyperlyptic curve over the rationals of genus G with Jacobian of mortal day rank R, if we impose a few additional conditions, so if the rank is less than or equal to G minus three, then we can pr prove an upper bound on the number of rational points in terms of the rank in the genus. And then of course the rank is bounded by the genus in this way. So it's bounded by um, G minus three. Now, what this means is, uh, so Chabotis work, uh, sorry, in Coleman's work, the Chabotis, um, uh, making Chabotis effective, uh, bounded the number of zeros of a piatic integral in a resu disk. And so what Scholl had to do was extend this to annuli and to show that um, you can cover uh, the chaotic points in a reasonable way, um, the finite number of disks and annuli, and then to extend the bound on the number of zeros of uh, log in the annuli. Right. Then Stoll's result was generalized by Katz, Rabinoff, and Zurich Brown to any curve satisfying the rank condition. So they show that, again, under the same rank hypothesis on the Jacobian, so less than or equal to g minus 3, then there is this quadratic bound on the number of rational points on the curve. Uh, and here they use ideas from tropical geometry uh, to extend some of what Stoll did explicitly uh, for hyperlyptic curves. So I just wanted to end with a challenge, uh, a particularly difficult genus two curve that we saw earlier. So this genus two curve appeared in the first lecture and I told you that we knew that it had finitely many rational points and that's thanks to uh, faultings and these other proofs that we know of the Mordell conjecture. But we know that we can find at least 642 rational points on this curve. So of course the question is, can we say anything more about this curve? And I think it's difficult given the current stage of what we know to compute the set of rational points here. And I just like to offer two reasons, but then um, you know, suggest that maybe this, this gives us hope for the future. Uh, so first is the curve um, doesn't have much in the way of exceptional geometry. Uh, there's no non-trivial automorphisms. Uh, beyond the hyperlyptic involution. Um, so nothing like what Weatherall did can help us out here. Um, but uh, looking at some other invariants associated with this curve, uh, for instance, the rank of the Jacobian of this curve, this suggests that things are perhaps more complicated than the other curves that we've studied so far. Uh, so in 2016, Stefan Mueller and Mikhail Stoll studied this curve and show that under a GRH, the rank of the Jacobian is 22. And there are no current methods, um, nothing involving Shabuti Coleman or extensions uh, in non abelian Shabuti or anything along those lines that can handle generic curves of this large rank. So I think a curve like this gives us a lot to hope for. Uh, we would like to have methods to understand curves like this in the future. Um, and with that, I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention.